Siskel and Ebert review Ted Danson and Isabella Rossellini as two cousins who fall in love. Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. star in the musical drama, Tap. And James Woods is a radical lawyer trying to clear a convict's name in True Believer. It's all coming up next on Siskel and Ebert. It's a, um, well, it's a love story. Lowry, I'm touched. <laughs> love blooms at a family wedding celebration, and so do love affairs and cousins. One of the new films we're going to be reviewing this week, and we will also have a special tribute to the individualism of the late actor and director, John Cassavetes on this edition of Siskel and Ebert. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. Our first film is yet another remake of a successful French film. And surprise, the remake is quite entertaining this time. The film is called Cousins, based on the 1975 romantic comedy Kazan Cuisine, which was a not-so-subtle argument for changing marriage partners if you really believe it's best. The American version wraps that argument in a lot of laughter as two couples switch partners. First, car salesman William Peterson sleeps with the married Sean Young. You're different. How? I don't know. Different. Different than Maria. That gaffe doesn't keep them apart. Meanwhile, their more conservative spouses, Ted Danson and Isabella Rossellini, are infatuated with each other, but Rossellini says no to sex. Is it just me, or do you also have this uncontrollable desire to put our lips together? We can't. You're right. We can't. Why can't we? And the older generation is on the make, too. Ted Danson's widower father, played by Lloyd Bridges, falls for Isabella Rossellini's widowed mother, Norma Alejandro. Can I use the phone to call a cab? Don't be ridiculous. Take my car. I'll stay here tonight. You can bring it back tomorrow with a full tank of gas. I'll bring it back tomorrow on one condition. Pick you up to have dinner. Beans, we are not compatible. Oh, come on. Dinner. On me? All right. You made no man very happy. You are not so old. Yeah, I know, and I'm not so happy. Lloyd Bridges' character is a classic. I don't think he's ever been funnier on film. And the script by Stephen Metcalf is smart as well as funny. The people in this movie actually approximate real people. And yet this is a very traditionally crafted entertainment. I thoroughly enjoyed Cousins. I did, too. I liked this movie, and I was surprised to like no. it, because usually when you there are all of these Hollywood retreads right. of French comedies, right. and usually they lack a little bit of the inspiration. You know, to me, the key to this movie was Isabella Rossellini. Well, she's she, has been, she has only been in four or five films, only two yeah. or three really big roles. She is luminous in this yes. film. She has a scene where she and Danson arrange to meet by accident at a restaurant where they're going to take their respective spouses. Right. And she almost cracks up when she sees him come in because she can't really play this role and go through with the charade. And the way that she says, oh, look who's here, and she laughs so that you know that she knew he was going to be here. That kind of acting is impossible to do on demand. It's got to come right out of the inside. Well, the other thing is that that acting is smart. And that's uh -huh. what I, I was appreciated about this film. We've always said that uh, foreign films have been much uh, smarter and much more real about mm -hmm. uh, human relationships, romantic involvement, mm -hmm. sex, and all that. Here's a film that is equal to the European So it, led, it uh, lives up to its inspiration. Absolutely. And you're right about Lloyd Bridges and uh, also about Keith Coogan, who plays Danson's son, the relationship the whole... between the grandfather and the grandson. And then the grandmother, too. There's another one. It was great. Very funny. Okay, next movie. And our next movie is, for my money, intelligent and intriguing and fascinating, even if it does happen, to also be a terrific thriller. The name of the movie is The Mighty Quinn, and it stars Denzel Washington from Cry Freedom 
as a police chief in an island not unlike Jamaica, who gradually unravels a very complicated murder while his own private life is coming unglued at the same time. One of the reasons for his troubles is a boyhood chum named Malby, played here by Robert Townsend. When a wealthy resort owner is found murdered, everybody wants to blame Malby, everyone that is, except for Chief Quinn, who smells a conspiracy. What are you smiling about? The uniform on. You look great. Quinn also has trouble on the home front with his wife, played by Cheryl Lee Ralph, who's rehearsing her reggae act. Because I don't know whether you have noticed it or not, but I am in the middle of a rehearsal. Oh, yeah. Now that might not mean much to you, but it means a hell of a lot to me. The investigation leads to the wife of the local hotel manager, played by Mimi Rogers, and her husband, the manager, James Fox, has no respect for the local chief. I think we've had enough questions for today. Thank you. Mr. Elgin? Even when Quinn captures Malby, neither of them seems to take it very seriously. One of the charms of the movie is how Denzel Washington makes this cop into such a likable character. I had the blues so bad one time It put my face in a permanent frown But now I'm feeling so much better I can cake walk into town the Mighty Quinn works as a fascinating thriller. It even has that great character actor M. Emmett Walsh in it. He, you know the Emmett Walsh rule. No movie with Emmett Walsh in it can be altogether bad. He's on hand right. as a villain from America. But it also works as a character study of this charming cop who knows Jamaica so well, he even knows which rules he can break. And it works as a portrait of the island, too, even though they never really name it as Jamaica. This is one of those rare thrillers that isn't just about who did it, but about how and why, and even about how the crime helps to shed some light on the society around it. The real discovery is Denzel Washington. He did a good job in Cry Freedom, but this is the first time we can really see his charm, humor, and sex appeal. And on the, on the basis of this performance, I think I can see him becoming a major star. Oh, there's no question about it. Uh, when he is shot in close-up, and he gets a number of them, yeah. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of pressure on him from, obviously, he's uh, been trained by the FBI in America. He comes back to his native island. He wants to be f true to his boyhood friend, his Malby, which gets him in trouble, and all the other people. Mm -hmm. And he also has to deal with the governor, who's uh, a former chicken And with his chicken wife car. at home, who's I mean, he, kind of obstreperous. He, so he's getting constant full shots and reaction shots, and when that camera hits him, mm -hmm. uh, the screen lights up. I mean, he's just a very exciting actor. The music is wonderful. I would buy the soundtrack album or accept a free one if someone will send me one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's wonderful. This is a joyful, life-filled movie, and it's a great thriller. It's To me, it's a real discovery. Absolutely. Now, everybody knows that song about the Mighty Quinn, right. which is just kind of borrowed and snuck into this movie. Right. Who would have thought that a movie called The Mighty Quinn about some murder in Jamaica... Starring Denzel Washington, not a big name. No, and who, I think, in his previous roles has never really shown us this kind of electricity, would be such a delight. I enjoyed this yes. movie tremendously. This is probably a candidate for our best ten list. Coming up next, James Woods... Probably, I think it is a candidate. Okay. James Woods plays a wild attorney who takes a break from defending drug dealers to try to free a man in prison for murder. The film is True Believer. You want to be a criminal defense attorney? Then know this going in. Everybody's guilty. I don't think I've ever done. During the break here, we have been just talking about the mighty Quinn some more and how much we enjoy <laughs> and sharing favorite scenes. Uh, it is an exceptional film. Our next film is another courtroom drama, and the star of the court and the film is actor James Woods, who always gives a compelling, typically frantic performance. And he's fascinating once again playing a former 60s radical lawyer who now defends guilty drug dealers. But a young idealistic lawyer, Robert Downey Jr., argues that Woods is not being true to his past. It's just that I left behind family and friends and a couple good job offers in, in Chicago. And in three dizzying weeks, I've helped to quit a coke dealer, a speed dealer. I specialize, Roger. An angel dust dealer. I'm not a kid anymore. A get... speed manufacturer. So get a job on Wall Street. I'm sure your rich daddy can arrange it. Look, man, don't tell me where to work. I came to New York to work for Edward Dodd, but I just can't believe that Edward Dodd has nothing better to do these days than invoke exalted legal issues to get off guilty little Donnie goes to work for Woods, and they seek to free an Asian man apparently wrongly imprisoned for murder. How could I help you? By trusting me. I got my face kicked in because I trusted you. I couldn't find a ballistics expert to say it wasn't your gun that killed Jimmy Chin, but it didn't matter. I went up against the damn DA himself, but it did, I didn't care because I trusted you, because I believed in you. 
Downey and Woods go to Chinatown to reenact the murder before trying the case. Time contracts. Space explodes. Perceptions can't be trusted as I pull out a loaded gun and... And then it's on to the courtroom. The film is called True Believer, and the title refers, I think, to the commitment a lawyer must make on behalf of his client. But the strength of the film is really James Woods. You can feel him struggle, struggle with taking on the case at all, and then really struggling to win it. The story's basic outline is familiar, but not the way Woods plays it. It does fall within the basic structure of this kind right. of movie, but of course James Woods makes every picture special. And I'm thinking about this whole show he's done up to this point. Right. Isabella Rossellini, Denzel Washington, now James Woods. Right. Extraordinary actors who are perfectly cast for these roles, in addition to everything else, so that they really make them work. James Woods is so smart and he's able to put a spin on things in so many different ways. He's not always playing the same character, even though he has some of the same mannerisms. And here, it's really interesting the change that he goes through when he gets behind defending this guy and learning, uh, once again, some of his old ideals. You use the word smart. I mean, this is what we keep demanding, is just people who approximate, uh, I've always used this, yeah. the, the even the dumbest people we know are smarter than most characters in the movie. And uh, he is very much enjoyable. It's not a great film. It's not in the category of the other two, I think, that we've been reviewing. No. but I recommend it. When we come back, Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. are a couple of hoofers, one reluctant and one old, in tap. We ain't got no legs. That means I ain't got no legs, you ain't got no legs, and them men in there ain't got no legs. Gregory Hines is the son of one of the greatest tap dancer stars of all time, but despite his own talent as a tap dancer, Hines did not follow his father's footsteps. He went into crime instead. The movie opens as he gets out of jail and goes to visit his dad's old club on Times Square. Upstairs on the top floor, Sammy Davis Jr. presides over a kind of retirement home for retired tap dancers. Give my cane. What do you think you're doing? And what are all you doing standing around here watching? You should be ashamed of yourselves. Now get out of here. Go on, get out of here. Get out. You gonna stay up with him all night? Drive to the doctor at 4 a.m.? Get on out of here. One of the real discoveries of this movie is Suzanne Douglas as Sammy's daughter and Heinz's on-again, off-again girlfriend. She's good. And that's a lot of fun. Actually, there are times when Tap doesn't seem to know if it wants to be a musical or a drama. Some of the heavy scenes seem sort of out of place with the song and dance. But basically, this is a very enjoyable movie because of the dancing and also because these characters are interesting. We expect good work from Gregory Hines, and we get it, but the surprises here are Sammy Davis Jr., who for once, maybe for the first time in his career, is not playing Sammy Davis Jr., and also another surprise, Suzanne Douglas, who brings a real grace and style to her acting and dancing. Then there are the seven veteran tap dance legends like Harold Nicholas and Sandman Sims, just hanging around waiting for a chance to dance in some of those scenes. I like the movie, and you know what? I'll bet that this movie would make a great Broadway show. Well, if they made it a great Broadway show, it would be because they accented more the dancing than mm -hmm. the drama here, because I think the drama is cornball. Um, I, the, you know, is he going to choose a life of crime, or is he going to choose a life of dance? I didn't buy it at all. At any stage of the thing, I thought that all of the performers were smarter than the script that they were given. The dancing is wonderful. With the opening sequence, when we see the old-timers dance, and seeing Sammy Davis Jr. not play Sam, it's all very interesting. And then we return much more. The film is weighted, if you want to put a clock on it, Roger, much more on a phony drama than on tap dancing. Gene, what you're forgetting here is that the idea of choosing between a life of dancing and a life of crime is that's part of the tradition of a movie like this. I mean, you have to go along with that. I mean, that's the conflict that's set up, you and, know. And did you buy it? Well, I bought it as... You're the one who said in the review I the bought drama. it as a plot device. I felt, however, that the dra dramatic scenes could have been played a little lighter. No kidding. To be in, but, but the fact that they're there, the fact that this conflict is set up, that's the plot device well, of the movie. And I mean, I, and what I, do you want it to be, a whole movie about dancing with no yes. decision to be made? Let me tell you something. They made I would that rather... movie. It was called Chorus Line. No, no. <laughs> no, that's a bad... And the dancing wasn't very good in the Chorus Line. The, this movie had strung together more sequences with a fine tap... I'm a tap dancing fan. I really So did you like the dancing enough to say yes to the movie? No. You didn't? I love the dancing. I did not like the drama. Well, there you go. Coming up next, our tribute to the great independent filmmaker John Cassavetes, who died last week at the age of 59. Saddened by the loss of what we all consider a great, great friend. 
For the last couple of years, it was well known in the movie business that John Cassavetes was seriously ill. And Roger and I talked on occasion about devoting a special show to this adventurous, non-commercial filmmaker. Sadly now, our tribute takes the form of an obituary and an appreciation, as Cassavetes died of cirrhosis of the liver last weekend at age 59. Cassavetes was best known to most people as an actor in more than 20 films, including The Dirty Dozen. Right, take my arm, put it around your neck. Very simple, huh? And then it's all in the leverage. He also played Mia Farrow's actor husband in Rosemary's Baby. I've been a creep. It's from wearing a bomb guard would regain his sight, rat that I am. Oh, it's natural. You're bound to feel two ways about it. Even if I'm Mr. Yamaha for the rest of my days, I'm going to stop giving you the short end of the stick. You haven't been. Yes, I have. I've been tearing my hair out over my career. Let's have a baby. His typically demented roles, though, were merely a way to raise money for his first love, making films that rebelled against Hollywood conventions, shooting initially in black and white such films as Shadows and Faces, and letting scenes run on past their traditional ending point to be as messy as life itself, as in my favorite Cassavetti's picture, Husbands, a story of male bonding. Bro. You won't get angry with me if we walk away with your club. Not only is that a great film about male bonding, it's a wonderful film about male fear of women. Now, you probably will be frustrated because John Cassavetti's films are not all available for home video rental. Very few are, as a matter of fact. He was such a rebel that he didn't want them seen on the small screen. Another tribute to this extraordinary filmmaker. And that, I must say, is a shame because it seems to me that since most of his films did not get wide commercial release, if mm -hmm. they're not on home video, people are not going to be able to see them at all. Right. There were even films like The Killing of a Chinese Bookie, which right. is one of my favorite films, starring Big Gazzara, that never got a commercial release at all. But despite the fact that he had all of these discouragements in his career, he kept soldiering on, and he made very original films. In many ways, John Cassavetes' whole career could be traced through his collaborations with his wife, Jenna Rollins. I don't know how autobiographical their films were, but she seemed right at home in his freewheeling, high-energy domestic explosions, and she won two Oscar nominations under his direction, including one for this film, A Woman Under the Influence, which also starred Peter Falk. I'm a warm person. I would... I know that. I'm not one of those stiffs that you like. They nose is up in the air. And boom, 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 but they nose is up in the air. Ew, 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 
lifelike. Mm -hmm. Scenes don't end in real life. You can't walk away. And he would stay with it and stay with an emotion, have more than one thing happen in a scene, and I bless him for that. To contrast his work with something totally different, I was thinking of that horrible Tom Selleck movie, Her Alibi, in right. which not a single line of dialogue in the entire movie is the right. sort of thing that anyone would ever really say. Right. What Cassavetes did was put a lot of film out there in which all of the characters spoke the way everybody really does speak. And to hear ordinary American speech with that energy and with that intelligence was a refreshing change from all the cliches we got. So let's take another look at the movies we reviewed on this show. Two thumbs up for Cousins, the charming, funny, and intelligent comedy about extramarital affairs. Isabella Rossellini is terrific. And two more very enthusiastic rounds of applause for The Mighty Quinn, a smart, captivating thriller directed by Carl Schinkel. Two more thumbs up for True Believer with a high-energy James Woods performance as a radical lawyer who rediscovers his roots. And a split decision on Tap starring Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. We both like the dancing, but Gene's thumb is down because of the movie's crime story. And so the real discovery is the Mighty Quinn. That's the one I'd like to see tonight. And then Cousins right after that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it for this week. Next time we'll have our annual Academy Award Surprises special show, reacting to the nominations to be announced next Wednesday morning. We'll talk about the surprise nominations and the surprises involving performers and films that were overlooked. That's next week, and until then, the balcony is closed. Nestle Crunch. It's creamy milk chocolate and crispy crunchies. Chocolate is scrunchious when it crunches. That's why you'll love Nestle Crunch. Johnny Cat Premium Cat Litter. Johnny Cat and a little privacy is all any cat needs. Everything else is just cat box filler. Certs is the taste everyone can agree on because fresh breath speaks for itself. Certs and sugar-free certs with Retson. Pledge. Generation after generation, Pledge keeps your wood furniture looking beautiful without any buildup. With Pledge, dusting can be beautiful.